My friends, Peston Lawn Ginger here for another episode of What's Wrong With My Lawn? Another person gave us a call and said their lawn isn't looking quite right, so let's go check it out. So guys, I wanted to pull you through and just kind of teach you exactly how we do these things. So number one, I'm going to be looking at the overall pattern. I want to see if there's a uniform issue or if it's just kind of sporadic, and that's going to point me in the right direction. Number two, I want to look at color. Uh, brown insinuates watering. Uh, orange insinuates uh, some sort of fertilizer burn. And then we get into these multi-pattern issues, which oftentimes are fungus. Uh, sometimes light, light green, light green can insinuate too much growth, uh, meaning forced growth from a fertilizer, or we could be dealing with something just as simple as iron chlorosis. Um, after that, I want to walk through and check, uh, see if there's turf insects by doing a pull test. And last but not least, we're going to be checking uh, watering coverage issues and soil density and we want to see if the soil is actually being saturated or not so let's go check it out just as usual what i'm looking for number one is an overall pattern and the pattern so far is pretty sporadic uh, secondary issues i'm going to be looking at color the color kind of varies a little bit but for the most part the color is brown you can see we get into these patterns and very rounded edges, but they're sporadic. So we're not dealing with something that is uniform. Now I'll take you on a walk from the backyard to the front yard. And overall, you can see we've got these kind of rounded edges that are kind of symmetrical. Um, the grass itself is a brown color. Um, pattern is really what I'm looking for. I'm trying to see if there's a distinct pattern overall. And as you can see, there's not. We get these spots just kind of popping up here and there. Um, this area is one of the worst. And you can see it goes from straight brown to green. And we have a nice crisp edge kind of following through. And as we turn around to the front, the front is looking pretty good. I got a couple of pockets here and there where um, the tips of the grass are a little bit yellow. Um, and just getting in here, you can see it almost looks as if this area has a slight uh, melting out fungus from receiving too much water. Now my next step here is I'm gonna wanna do a couple of pull tests here. Um, I like to do it in and around uh, the edges. And I've got a little co-star here who's going to help me out with this. Um, <laughs> but we want to pull on this a little bit and just see what we're dealing with. We want to make sure that uh, the grass is intact. And you can see it's not really pulling out, which uh, leads me to believe that we're not dealing with the turf insect problem. Now, you want to make sure that you check a bunch of different areas, including in the brown areas. Now, it's not uncommon mother nature is going to um, send her turf insects to clean up this mess now i've checked the other spots as well and it, i do not believe we're dealing with any turf insect issues at this point now just like i preached in the past we're going to check for watering I, I like to use my ams soil probe it's a good device check for watering now i always want to go to the greener areas first uh, to see what normal is supposed to be like and we're going to pull this and it looks like I hit a rock. So I'm going to try another area real quick. And I'm, I'm hitting rocks, but I'm punching pretty quick. You can see right here, we've actually got really good soil saturation. Uh, these plugs are coming through extremely wet. I know that they've got water in here. Chances are these people are overcompensating on the water and crossing their fingers. That it's hitting that brown spot but we're going to check that brown spot just in case see what happens and this one's dry i'm going to pull another one just to make sure that it's not just a coincidence and as you can see it's bone dry so we know that we're not dealing with turf insects and we know this plug is absolutely bone dry 
uh, due to the lack of water. Now, we want to see this time of the year, it's 100 degrees this whole last week and this upcoming week too, we want water six to eight inches penetrating into the soil. At this point, we've got nothing. So a lot of these people end up getting caught up in how much minutes their timers are running. We know at this point there's absolutely no water in the soil and that's going to be our primary causation. Now people want to know why. 99% of the problem comes from the sprinklers shooting up and over. So at this point I'm going to find the valve, we're going to manually turn it on and just see exactly what's going on with the sprinklers. Now you can obviously turn this on from your sprinkler control box but I find that in my line of work nobody's ever home. So, you'll notice on here we've got an on and off switch. Um, <laughs> luckily for me, there's a giant black widow nest. So I'm gonna grab my uh, my screwdriver and kind of kind of tap on this first a little bit, see if I can't draw her out, see if that black widow is there. Now that I know that it's not there, I'm gonna go ahead and just clean this off a little bit, make sure that I don't have to get my hands in the in the widow's nest and if she is in here I want to scare her just enough that she's gonna go away so uh, we're gonna try these one by one I want to tap on that and make sure that I'm not going to get bit here if I do I love you guys I'll see you at the hospital but I'm guessing not now my on is gonna to be to the left and lo and behold as you can see it turned on pretty well and we have water this brown spot here is associated with this head and you can see it's fanning outward left to right but nothing is coming out of the middle well the few that is is going straight down and the thing that's happening on the other side of it so is exactly the same it's just being pointing it's just pointing right down so I'm going to turn that off and move to the next one. I'm going to set this measuring device, this bowl that I have out, uh, to catch water to see if we'll actually catch anything. And I'm going to manually turn that on. And oddly enough, this other valve box, which Miss Kitty is helping me out with, is also full of black widow webs. So. I want to make sure that uh, I'm just going to tap on the web first, see if I can't get her to come out, and uh, stay safe, my friends. Nobody wants to get bit by the widow. Interesting fact, though, most people are not allergic to black widow venom, and you do not need to go to the hospital. Uh, the lucky 1% do. How you tell if you need to go to the hospital or not? I don't know. Good luck with that one. So it's probably better if you go. I tap on that, good to go. Way out on the parking strip. So we're gonna move to the next one. Shut this one off. And if you guys are worried about how to know how to do this, it's got it on this way, off that way. It's pretty simple. Even, even a ginger can do it. So we're going to turn this one, and sure enough, it gets sprayed right in the back. It's my favorite. So we're going to turn it on and then run. I don't know why they do this. Look at this. Sprinkler right there, spraying me right in the back. It's my favorite. And then sprinkler here. Now, let's just look at this right here. If you look here, this is a 360 head. You can see it's literally spraying 360 degrees right around this dead spot. And it's not going anywhere. So I think it's safe to say we've got a serious sprinkler coverage issue. Normally there's multiple heads that are gonna take care of this. But let's go around front, see exactly what we're dealing with. And Again, we've got three heads here, four heads, surrounding the ginger. Luckily, it's 100 degrees out, so I'm not going to get wet. But you can see that one is spraying exactly on that edge. Boom. And it's not spraying any further. 
when we look at our cup, the cup is completely empty. So I want to start looking for heads. And I want to look in this corner. I'm not seeing any sort of head in this corner. I'm assuming that there's a head over here since it's green right there, but I'm really not finding anything. So let's go ahead and go back through and figure out. Now, one interesting thing here is, is this head needs adjusting. It is spraying up and over. Now, just like I brought my, uh, and I really just pulled this out, I wish I had some plastic cups. But you can set a, set a bunch of plastic cups out here and measure how much water is actually hitting. Now you can see this is bone dry. So we're gonna, t we're gonna go back to the drawing board and figure out which one of these valves is supposed to be hitting this area. All right guys, so I turned on the next valve and you can see it just comes over here. So we've obviously got a broken station. Um, this whole area, and I went through all the accessible valves uh, that were available in this area and it's not hitting and it's not coming on so I can safely assume that we're dealing with uh, An issue with one of the stations not coming on and this backyard station. I haven't seen it turn on either So I'm gonna turn this one off. We're gonna go back to the first one And they do have a little leak in their valve as well that I'm gonna suggest that they get fixed um Let's see, I got that turned off. Turn this one back on. And we're gonna go back out to the front. Let's see. But in my opinion, we've got water on all these parking strips. And then the next valve hits here. And then I've got nothing spraying on this side. Now the thing that bothers me the most about this whole section is this area is, is wet. And then you go just a couple of feet over and it's completely bone dry. So I know that there's heads over here that just aren't popping up, but we can't figure out why. <laughs> So I've been through every single one of the stations with the customer. I finally ended up calling them because I can't get these uh, two heads right here to pop up. I, I can't even figure out what station they're on. It's just bugging the crap out of me. So I ended up getting him on the phone. He came down. We went through the sprinklers twice. And this section is not even turning on. So this is the first time this has ever happened to me. But somebody actually had the master plans for the sprinklers. And this is the section that's not coming on front and back. Um, that's gonna end up being causation. I'm just hoping that we can figure this out because after they did the wiring, the station numbers aren't matching up, uh, but the heads haven't changed. So we're gonna keep looking, keep digging. So the sprinkler box wasn't turning on, so I just turned it on manually. I had to dig this one out. Um, but it looks like the heads are turning on and just like I thought, this one's kind of spraying up and over the top. And we know that we've got coverage issues and that's why this whole area is brown. Now I want to check on the backside because these heads aren't even turning on. And lo and behold, we've got water coming out and it was so buried. You just took that out, didn't you? Yes. Holy cow. It was so buried in there, it wasn't popping up at all. I'm gonna do the same thing over here, where it's dripping. <laughs> Come on, you can do it. Feel it. Right there. That's just so bad. Can even hear the pressure. It's like, oh, I see it's right there. <laughs> you can do it. Oh. Hey, Eureka. So wait. Huh? 
But it looks like it's starting to cover now. Looks like uh, so we're starting to get water in the bowl too at this point. Now, as for the fix, guys, uh, we don't really want to get into this chemically yet. We really want to focus on the watering. We want about six to eight inches of water into the soil, uh, which means we want to do a water output test to see how long that's going to take. Once we get about four to six inches of water in, then we can focus on the fertilizer to wake up the drought stress. Still going to recommend the Essentials 101 on this and then three quarters pound of nitrogen and we're going to want to do a follow-up treatment in about two weeks now these bigger sections here they may not come back they've been drought stressed for a very long time at that point the customer is going to have to make the difficult decision if they want to do an overseed or if they want to just put new sod in until the meantime guys if you guys have any questions or concerns hit me up in the comments and this is what's wrong with my lawn my sprinklers suck have a good day bye